Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is Rami Dawood. Some of you guys may know me. Uh, some of you, this may be the first time you're getting to know me, and I'm sitting here with Progression of a Filmmaker. Enjoy. I've been working on a lot of stuff. I've been, uh, I got a new album coming out, Kashta. I've got, uh, well, yeah, I got a little animated series, actually, something to surprise the people. And uh, I've been focusing a lot on on, uh, on this album, really, Kashta. I've been working on it, and uh, I can't wait for it to, for you guys to hear what's, what's in store. Oh, <laughs> it has evolved tremendously. You know, when I was first, when I first came out, came out, you know, uh, like on the scene, I guess, maybe around 2006, that 2007 with the Ambassadors, I was, it was, I was doing like just straight, like boom bap, you know, hip hop music. Over the years, you know, since I've traveled back and forth to Sudan, and uh, I started getting a little buzz, uh, I really started incorporating a lot more. <clears throat> Uh, you know, African music. My, my music, and you're going to hear this on the new album, is going to be a, uh, a heavy, heavy Sudanese, East African uh, music influence on there. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Kashta is a, it is the name of the founder of the 25th uh, dynasty in ancient Egypt, which were uh, actually they were Kushites. Kashta is the father of uh, Pi, or in Arabic they call him Bianchi, and he's the grandfather of Taharka or the or Tarhaka. And uh, you know these the 25th dynasty were uh, tremendous people. I mean, uh, some of the rulers were actually mentioned, um, you know, in the Bible. They, they, they did a lot of amazing stuff and they brought back, you know, Egyptian or Kemetic, you know, uh, culture back to the Nile Valley. You know, this is really aimed for a Sudanese audience, especially young people, younger people, because I feel like they're lost almost. They, uh, when I was in Sudan two years ago, uh, you know, I was helping my little cousin study and I was looking through her history book <clears throat> and uh, I wouldn't say to my surprise, but I guess to my uh, disappointment, uh, there was not there was very, very little and very basic information on Sudanese history, on the African, you know, on African history in general, but Sudanese history, I didn't, I didn't see anything. You know, they used to talk about Taharka, you know, every now and then and, and stuff like that, but it was, it was almost like careless. And uh, that that's dangerous because when you got a people you know these youth that grow up and they go to school and they don't learn about who they are and they don't learn about the greatness that they come from they're not gonna have they're not gonna have uh, belief in themselves that they can you know return to that greatness again and so I, I felt like uh, I had to do something about it through my music and uh, so I decided to call it Kashta because he is the founder of the 25th dynasty and that's uh, you know I'm hoping to uh, you know, at least attempt to return to that greatness that we once had. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be, there's, they're gonna be, uh, you know, not, not a wide range of topics, but uh, they're, they're different topics that are uh, under the same umbrella, I guess, if, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, the album as a whole is gonna be talking about uh, I want to. I really want to focus on on Sudanese culture. I want to teach the outside world about Sudanese culture because you know they get a one-sided view of Sudan. They just see the war and whatnot and the things that are the, the negative aspect of it. Which I'm not saying it's not happening. It's definitely happening, which I'm going to be talking about too. But I'm going to be talking uh, more about the greatness that that that's running through our veins. You know. Um, if our ancestors were able to do it, and this this blood is running through us, we we get that we got what it takes to go back to that. I don't I don't doubt that one bit. To the so-called man who shot my uncle, 
My name is Rami Dawood and I'm here to confront you. I'm not here to tell you to watch your back or your front you. Don't need to fear your uh, I don't know if that song will make the, the final track listing for Kashta. Uh, the song was written... Uh, so in 2013, in September of 2013, there was an uprising in Sudan, in Khartoum, the capital city. And, uh, uh, you know, students and people in general went out to protest because they've just had enough of the, the mistreatment of the Sudanese government. And uh, I don't know the exact number, but many people were killed. And my uncle, uh, he, was, uh, he wasn't protesting. Keep in mind, he's a man in his 60s. He was just out, just a, you know, a bystander, uh, a citizen. He left his house and he was walking, uh, walking around, you know, in his neighborhood. And he went on, a cor- on an intersection to see what was going on. And he started hearing gunshots. And, uh, you know, because of the echoes with the buildings, he didn't really know where the shots were gum- coming from, where the sounds were coming from. And uh, they aimed at him and they shot him in the knee. And then when he went to the hospital, they didn't operate on him. They, they, were, they didn't treat him right away. They refused. And so I don't know how many hours he spent with, with you know, being shot. And when they finally uh, treated him, uh, he had to get his leg amputated from the knee down. And basically I wrote that song. Uh, I'm not asking any questions. It's more of a co- uh, confrontation to the coward that shot my uncle. So to answer that question, I would have to take you back in time. Uh, the Nubian region is considered to be from Dungula in northern Sudan um, all the way to Aswan in southern Egypt. Now starting in the, 19, in the early 1900s, there were dams built in, uh, in Aswan. And little by little, those dams uh, were built on top of, to, you know, they were extended up until 1964 when the high dam was built, which flooded a major part, a major section of the Nubian area. Uh, The Nubians in Egypt were forced to relocate to Komombo and the Nubian, the Halfawis in in, in northern Sudan, the Halfawi Nubians were forced to relocate in Khashm al-Girba in eastern Sudan. Um, A lot of artifacts were destroyed, man. They they were, they're gone underwater, under the lake. This is uh, the largest man-made lake in the world. Um, and then the you know the artifacts that were not lost underwater, many of them were sold to you know museums and, and, and countries elsewhere. Now today, the government of Sudan is planning on building three more dams in the Nubian region. Uh, two of them, uh, one one of them is, is in Qatar, the second one is in Dal. If those two dams are successfully built. Nubia, as we know it, is going to be wiped out forever. Uh, literally, the whole, every single village, every single town, city, school, places of worship, uh, our life as we know it, the Nubian lifestyle, as we have known it since the, the, since our creation, since since you know the founding of civilization, is going to be gone, erased, and we're going to be forced to relocate. Now, speaking from from experience, not me personally, but because I'm Halfawi and my people were forced to relocate. Where we live now, it's not on the Nile. Um, our diet has been different. We, we, it's a different lifestyle for us. We, this is what we've known for thousands and thousands of years. And all of a sudden, when you take someone that that's all they know, and you force them to live somewhere else, it's a, people can't people can't live like that. And uh, it's not even a, uh, an inhabitable area because uh, there's been countless, many, many ca- uh, cases of death, cancer, due to asbestos, um, you know, things like that. And the government is, is just neglects, is neglecting uh, the people, the people's voices. And so uh, I'm vocal about it because uh, this is my history that I'm proud of and I'm not just going to sit there and be quiet and watch it get destroyed. It's called Duana, and this is my very first time dealing with animation. I have no experience whatsoever in animation, but this is an idea that I've had for maybe about a year and a half now. 
Um, I wanted, I'm, I'm, ma- I'm working on this animated series uh, for Sudanese uh, children, you know, ages four to eight, and uh, adults might enjoy it too, who knows. Uh, I wanna make this, this show because uh, I want, you know, little kids, little boys and girls to, re- to have, a, you know, this character that they can relate to. When you watch Sudanese TV, all the kids, the cartoons they watch, it's they're watching people from somewhere else. They they have no connection with them, and uh, you know, speaking from a psychological you know point of view, when you grow up and all you see the the, the successful characters you see on TV, they don't speak like you, they don't look like you, they don't dress like you. You you start getting a, a sense of uh, inferiority, you know, and you feel like these people may be superior to you, and so you try to be like them, and you lose contact of, of who you really are. You lose sense of who you are, and so I want to make this character, this uh, young girl, a village girl, and uh, you know the, the series is going to be following her and her adventures, uh, teaching people about her culture, learning about other. Uh, Sudanese cultures from different part of the nation and uh, you know I, I, I think people are really gonna enjoy it my dream role is to portray Bob Marley if anybody out there is thinking about uh, making a film about the life of, of the great Bob Marley contact me